Let's do some drywall. Oh, look at this kitchen backsplash. They removed the cabinets, demoed out the tile, and look at the damage they did to these walls. So they're calling a the drywall in. Of course, I'd like to rip out this whole area and replace it with new sheetrock, but their budget doesn't call for it. So what we're going to do is just patch in the bad areas and refinish the rest. First, I like to go through, put down tarps, plastic, whatever it takes to catch all your demo. Square off the areas. Use a 1x2, 2x4, a level, T-square, anything, a straight edge. Pencil off your areas. We always want to cut out the areas nice and square, like a 1x1, 1x2, 2x4, etc., etc. Making it nice and square because our new sheetrock is square. It's not round, so we put in square pieces of sheetrock. Get everything cleaned up. Pencil the edges of your original studs. Get everything nice and square and cleaned up. Once you get everything squared up, you have to add backing. For backing, I like to use 1x2s. You can also add 1x2s, 2x4s, 2x6s, sheeting, whatever it takes, you need to add backing. This is pretty much the same process like any other video of mine of patching. It's just a larger patch job is all this is. So pretty much the same process. Add backing, pull your nails and your original studs, get everything ready for patching. Always add screws to your outside edges and any sheetrock patch jobs. This is to keep the old original sheetrock tightened down. Add backing. I always add backing on each side of patches. Add plenty of screws. I like to add screws every one to two inches on my backing. Basically just cutting out the sheetrock pieces. Like I said, I originally wanted to replace this whole area, but we're just going to patch it in. Take your measurements, just patch it in. It's easier to do what you can do, just small areas, because we are just going to tape and mud it. Cut out your boxes, get everything squared up, cut out. The piece is kind of tight, you cut it back with a razor blade, no big deal. Sometimes the prep work, getting the sheetrock installed is more work than the actual drywall process itself. Pencil your areas, take your measurements, your boxes. I like to measure the boxes, square boxes, and just write it on the wall. Cut it out, just mark it with your level. Use a keyhole saw or whatever level straight edge, pencil it so you know where your square box is. You usually cut it out with a keyhole saw. Keyhole saws work the best. The box is tight, you just use a razor blade and cut it to fit. You're just basically whittling sheetrock to make it fit in place is all we're doing here. Cut it back, cut it back. You always have to change out your razor blades and your sheetrock knife. So you have nice clean blades to cut through that sheetrock easy. I had plenty of screws. This is half inch drywall, so I'm using inch and a quarter to inch and a half sheetrock screws. Since I already finished this area, I'm just scraping everything down and I'm adding fiberglass tape. I'm basically doing everything I can every square foot before I move on to the next section. Same thing here. Take your measurements. Make sure everything's ready. I'm just piecing in the drywall. Like I said, I originally like to do a big four foot section across here, a big belly band, but they didn't want to pay for that. So we're just piecing it in. Sometimes piecing it in is more tedious, but... When it's all said and done, mudded and textured, it all looks the same. Add plenty of screws in all your patches. You don't want them to crack out, so we add plenty of screws. Go through and make sure everything's nice and tight. Add screws on your outside of your sheetrock. Same thing here. Scrape all the edges with your 6-inch knife. Get everything fiberglass. All the joints, fiberglass. Any holes, any gaps, fiberglass. Big gaps in the patches, you can double fiberglass. I always use fiberglass mesh tape on any repair work. This peeling paper, a lot of guys like to paint over this peeling paper, but sometimes you could just tape right over it because we're going to mud over it. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, guys, that do all kinds of stuff with this paper that shows. Literally, you just got to scrape it and put fiberglass. Now I'm just doing a first cut. I'm using a joint compound. 
This is a larger job, so I'm not gonna use hot muds on this. I'm just gonna do a first coat with regular joint compound. Get it nice and first coated, nice and heavy. I'm gonna let it dry overnight and come back the next day and sand it with a 100 grit sandpaper and turn around and touch it up with hot muds. And then I'm gonna skim coat it again with another joint compound coat process. I'm just coating it nice and heavy. You don't want to put it too heavy. We don't want a big bulge on the wall. So we're just putting a nice uniform coat on it. I'm using a 12 inch knife and a six inch knife. These are always my go-to drywall knives. I know a lot of guys out there, mostly East Coast or other parts of the country where they use a hawk and trowel. I live in Arizona and the West Coast, we use a pan and knife. Get it all nice and coated. Let this dry overnight. It usually takes overnight to dry come back the next day and sand it. This is the next day, I'm just sanding it with 100 grit sandpaper, just doing a quick pole sanding. We're not grinding it down, we're just taking off the lap marks and all the humps. I'm going through with a damp sponge and taking off some of the dust. And now I'm gonna be touching it up with a 20 minute hot mud. I'm just hitting the bad gaps and stuff. Like I said, they're just gonna end up covering this with cabinets and stuff. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna get it pretty perfect. Filling in all the deep stuff, any chatters. Just doing a nice fill. Just This area is pretty rough, so I'm doing a full coat, a 20 minute over this. This 20 minute hot mud, if you didn't wanna use a hot mud, then you just have to second coat it. Let the second coat process dry and then maybe do a third coat. I'm using a hot mud because I don't want to come back. This is my second trip to this job. So now I'm just doing a joint compound, just like the first coat, but this is I'm going past my first coat, past my touch up hot mud areas. Nice tight coat. It's basically a smooth wall finish. It's not a perfect level five smooth wall, but it's a, a nice smooth finish. If they sanded this down the next day with 150 to 200 grit sandpaper, it'd be almost a perfect smooth wall. Notice how efficient these knives are. These people that use hawk and trowels, they're not efficient unless you're really good with a hawk and trowel. This is just a 12 inch hide drywall knife that I use and an 18 inch pan and a six inch knife and I did all this. A box of joint compound. I'm going past my original mud work, always go past your next coat. You always want to go past your prior coat. 